Hey Strat fans, what's going on? It's Colonel Strat, the strategy extraordinaire here, and today I'm going to show you one of my second favorite race in Warhammer, um, the Lizardmen. So, the Lizardmen have a very um, versatile monster-like roster. Um, they're very heavily armored, just like the dwarves, but they have a lot more versatility with their monsters, and they don't have as much range firepower, but they focus on like dinosaur monsters. They're the lizard people. The, the good old frogs, the the, <laughs> the dinosaur folks, um, where literally a whole section of their race is called Saurus. Like, come on, GW. But anyway, um, so the Lizardmen are very formidable, very slow faction as well. Um, they're very much a tank faction, just like the dwarves, hence why I love them so much. Um, so, they... Uh, um, I'm going to be showing you Lord Mazdmoody today because... To, compared to him and Krokgar, who are the both, who are both the um, the base game lords you'll get for just owning game two, um, Mazdamundi has less faction effects, so he's more generic than Krokgar. Even though he is very, very much, um, very probably more powerful than Krokgar in, in a spell sense, he still has like Krokgar still, um, he he has more bonuses to Saurus, whereas, you know, Mazdamundi just has these three effects. So, um, without further ado, we are going to get right into the campaign. The Great Ones <coughs> have I, I love how slow they talk to fucking toad, the toad people. Alright, so, um, this is a Lizardman campaign, so when we start, um, most Lizardmen start very, um, very much centralized to Lustria, except if you're Nakai, um, or Oxyodal, but, uh, they're very, um, it's a similar start to others, and they only have a few unique mechanics on the campaign map. One thing they do have that's, that slows them down is their upkeep, like, basic Saurus Warriors is 188, but, as you can see, they start with 60 armor, which is still pretty good. Um, and these are like the basic ones, even without shields. They still have a lot of armor. Croc scores have 100. Like, even skinks have 30 armor, which is, you know, comparable to Empire Swordsmen. So, they still have pretty good armor, pretty good me um, leadership. Melee attack and defense is decent. Weapon strength is really good, too. So, they're really, really good um, to start with. But, um, all Lizardman units have this, Primal Instincts. So, I believe, yeah, all Lizardman units, bar skinks, yeah, bar skinks, have primal instincts, which, um, gives them, like, a bonus to their physical resist, melee attack, and charge bonus. It can also, for some units, cause a rampage, I believe. Um, which, I'm trying to, trying to see, um, most, most of these, um, like, Primal Instincts ha was changed from just pure on Rampage, but these ones can all Rampage, I believe, if they, uh, suffer, um, 
if they suffer enough casualties, they'll start triggering um, <coughs> rampage. But I don't think I think they changed that. So like in the past, every lizardman unit could rampage, and you'd have to have like a source scar veteran or your lord have like this rampage cooling ability. Which let me see if um, they still have it. I haven't played them in a while. Um, yeah, yeah, they have cold blooded, which stops a rampage. So um, you would have to use this ability to stop your unit from rampaging, um, because they could rampage right into like an enemy spear wall and they would kill it. So yeah, they they struggle with that. But other than that, their the roster is very er really good early on, and um, you you'll struggle with gold in the beginning as well. Um, for as far as technology goes, the tech tree is not the best. I think it could use a rework um, because they have you have to build certain buildings to unlock these techs, and then you go you build this building to unlock the advanced techs, and then you go to the this building to get the final techs after you get these two. And it's just basic, like you know, plus five melee defense, plus five melee attack, plus ten percent speed. You know, it, it's good. They're okay buffs, but like. They're just very generic buffs. There's nothing unique in their tech tree. Um, the Lizardmen, being a Warhammer 2 race, have rights as well, just like the Dark Elves and the High Elves do. So the Lizardmen rights has the right of primeval glory, which spawns an army, which is why it costs so much. A full army of like feral Carnosaurs, Stegodons, Bastilodons, like all the big monsters. Um, near your, your capital, and also gives you an army ability to summon cold ones. It can only be performed um, once every fifteen, every every fifty turns. So it's still it, it's like the get out of jail free card if you're having problems. The right of Sotek increases your am da damage, like your ambush chance, melee attack, and it buffs up your skinks. The uh, right of ferocity um, just gives you more recruit rank and experience and all that. And then white awakening gives a slam mage priest, which is what Mazdamundi is, which. They have access, especially as the Moody, has access to a lot of different spell lores. Um, and they are very, very powerful mages. So they're the big, big boy mages of Lizardmen. So for their buildings, they have these, their Ziggurat's main building. Their main, um, their main, uh, <coughs> recruitment buildings. You know, they have their main, um, they do have access to resources. They have their advanced military buildings that give them, you know, it looks similar to the High Elves with their buildings, but they do have something different with the Geomantic Web. So, the Geomantic Web is something that links, I believe, it links all faction capitals together. So if you capture a faction capital or you're allied to it, it buffs up the commandment in the province. Not the best um, mechanic that, that they could come up with it. It is lore friendly. But um, I really wish you could buff up something else than just the commandment because a lot of times you're going to be struggling to hold a whole settlement, especially, I mean, a whole province, especially in Lustria, because there's a lot of different factions and you don't want to, like, you know, piss off every, everybody. But, uh, you know, these chaos factions, you're of course going to fight off. The, um, the, <coughs> the, uh, the Skeggy up here as well, the Nors Norskins, you're going to fight off, but, like, you might want to keep the Imperials happy for a little bit, or, you know, um, or try to make peace with the Dark Elves so you don't get invaded all over, because, like, especially for Mazdamundi, you have enemies everywhere. And most Lizardman campaigns have enemies everywhere. So, um, Diplomacy, very cold-blooded. They don't even really like their own people. So, Diplomacy is very hard for the Lizardmen. And the Lizardmen have a very slow campaign crawl. But once you get up to end, end, to end here, you're you're really you're really going be, being good you're going to start being able to steamroll once you make it to end tier, tier but you got to make it there all right so um that pretty much sums up the campaign stuff let's get into some armor compositions all right here we are with the tier one so uh it seems pretty basic when we start so these uh even though these are technically the sources are tier two units um we can recruit them early on so i count them as tier one um, they're just so good that they can be cla that they're classified as a tier two. So we start with um, some Saurus warriors, um, just regular mace infantry, just big old hulky Saurus boys with, with, with maces. 
Uh, I've got about six of these guys with a Scar Veteran leading them. Uh, and then um, to accent them both, we have Feral Bastilladons. Still very, very good units. And we can recruit them early on as well. Um, so, again, very easy to get. So I count them as a tier as tier ones. Um, and then in the back, we have some actually tier one infantry, Skink Cohorts with Javelin. Um, I prefer the Javelin ones over the Spitting ones because they just do more damage and they poison attacks. So they hurt the enemy's damage. We have Lord Master Mundi in his floaty chair in the back. Um, and then on Flying Ohai, we have a Skink Priest with the Lord of Heavens on a um, <coughs> Pterodon. Now, they, get the, they have m multiple mount options, and so usually you get the Pterodon really easily, um, really fast. So that's why I counted him on there. So we're facing a Tier 1 Skaven army, so let's get into the battle. So again, like I said, um, as Lizardmen, it's better for us to have the enemy come to us and then counter charge when they get close. I, uh, I have a few spells, plus um, the drop rocks ability, um, but all of my heroes are going to try to keep the big monsters from rampaging, um, so that we don't rampage them into a bunch of Skaven slaves that get that and then it gets surrounded. Alright. So it looks like they're trying to move towards the flanks. Not like we have many missile infantry to deal with. Um, but we will wait for them to come towards us. They're waiting till they're fully in formation before they move. That's probably what they're waiting for. Come on now. Alright, I'm gonna move forward. No, 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 no. Hold, hold. They're moving forward. Clan rats are coming in on the side. Look at the wolf rats. Let's charge in. Get them. We could take them. Alright, let's use this wind attack against these Skaven. Oh! oh the warlord. Jeez. We can use Apotheosis, the High Elves magic, to heal some guys. Alright, let's send some javelins in to deal with these guys. guys melee defense and melee attack and armor so they can deal with this warlord all right nobody's rampaging yet so that's good we did run run the guys back let's push forward oh they, they did a the wolf rats came behind us All right, skinks, fire at them. Fire at will. All right. Doing fine. Let's do another wind attack. Let's do it on their uh, on their forces right here. Thing is, he's on a pterodon, so he's gonna be able to get there fast. And wind attacks aren't that good. 
but he can also buff up their the units like that with the ammonic conversions. Uh, we did we do run out of um, ammunition fast with the skink javelins, but we have routed the enemy's army really fast as well. Because again, you know we have superior troops. Our troops are very superior to them. Even though we may lose some troops, um, we always will win in the end because we have we just out out outplay them entirely. Well, you know what? I'm going to net up them and talk them if I can, so they can't leave. No, or not. It's fine. Oh, okay, there we go. We net up and talk to them. Let's chase them down for old time's sake. Get him. Get him, my Thoris and my Skeeks. Feast on them, my dinosaurs. That's enough, buddies. Okay, so now with that, uh, let's wrap this up and go on to a tier two. All right, and here we are with a tier two. So to upgrade tier two, you see a lot of different changes. Now um, for our main line, not a lot has changed. We just strapped a shield onto the boys, um, Soros Warriors with shields. Still very, very good unit for a tier, for a tier two. Um, and again, you know, we, we add on that missile deflect chance um, Swapping small arms, it really does help um, towards the second tier when enemies getting a lot more missile fire. Um, and then, of course, on the on the ends we have a source spears with shields as well. Um, I do have a couple of these units. Um, are the blessed variant? You see these different color palettes. So the blessed means that they they just get an extra thousand health points, and they also get perfect vigor which is very very good to get and the Lizardmen could get these blessed spawning units and you'll start getting them um, when you complete missions so you can get them anytime but I start implementing them and getting the good ones about tier 2 time so um, again and then on the sides we have Croxagors now I know it says tier 3 but you usually get these are from the um, from the tier um, 3 minor settlement building so um, if you can get any unit from a tier 3 building can be considered tier two tier three is tier four and five so i usually get these about the tier two time anyway so that's why i include them they're very powerful 100 armor 81 leadership 100 weapon strength with with um, armor piercing anti infantry very good they're siege attacker they have missile resistance cause fear they're really really good to have um so i have one of those on each side again with the Stegodons. The Stegodons can be recruited from the first tier three um, um, dinosaur building in your main capital. So I count them as a tier two unit, even though they're very good, so they're listed as tier three. So the Stegodons, um, a lot better than the Feral Pastilodons. They have a bunch of skinks on them that fire missiles, and they have um, armor piercing poison attacks. Very, very good um, against a lot of late tier infantry, and reduces their attack, the enemy's attack. And they are pretty good in a fight as well. Um, 110 armor makes them, rounds them out and makes them really good. So I have a couple of those on the sides. Um, up here in the front, um, I have me some chameleon skinks. Chameleon skinks are really good missile units. Um, they can, they're striders, meaning they don't have any penalties from, ignore, from, from uh, terrain. They can fire while moving. They stalk. They have 40% missile resist and they have vanguard deployment. Um, with their poison attacks, they have a heavy 23 missile damage and 25 melee attack with poison. So they're very, very good um, to weaken enemy units as well and harass them. They're, they have a decent speed too. That's why I put them up against this Nurgle force because Nurgle doesn't have a lot of speed. So again, we have Mazdamundi. This time he has a few more spells. He has Arcane on Forging. He has Common Casadora. Um, so he's you know decked out a few more spells. Um, and then we have our Skink Priest, Lord of Heavens, on a Stegodon by now. Um, again, he's he has a Comet of Casadora, he has some items. Um, we have our Sword Scar Veteran, um, 
on a cold one this time. Yeah, he's decked out with some more items and some more abilities. So, um, so yeah, he's he's better as well. And then I've added a new hero um, in the form of the Skink Oracle. Now, I don't know if this was the FLC or DLC or part of the DLC for um, Oxyodal, but I included it because the Skink Oracle is just really, really good of a unit. Um, they have a really good missile strength. Um, they have a really good... <coughs> they have poison attack. They um, have a decent amount of spells, kind of like a Lore Master of Hoeth. So they're really good to have. Um, and you can get them around this time too. Um, and they come with their with their um, Troglodon um, mount. So they're already really powerful. And their Troglodon has like you know a decent range with that poison armor piercing and anti large um, missile attack. So that is our setup. Let's go into the battle against Nurgle. All right, now we're gonna fire on some demonic units. Those are the ones we want to route. Oh no, these plague flies, these bloat flies. That's that's probably what did us in. Plague drones. Yeah. Come on, no, 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 we're not gonna fight the plague drones, no. And the plague toads as well. They're what did us in. I didn't anticipate that. Even though we are, the, the other um, chameleon skinks are helping the one that's being attacked. And they're already crumbling, so that's great. Go after those plague toads on the side there. Go after those guys. Get these skinks out of here. Let's fire on him. Go wind blast. These. Yeah, demonic units aren't the best because <laughs> they're going to um, especially if we know we can beat them. But the uh, the ones that we're going to have to work out for are the uh, the non-demonic units, meaning the, the ones that are the. Uh, the human units, those are the ones we're gonna have to look out for. Let's do arcane unforging on the great unclean one. Have him fire at that. Fire, fire. Focus on those. Fire, fire. If we can get the demonic units down, then uh, that'll be good. Let's focus, let's go, let's have these croxagores focus on these plague toads. I think Mazamuni just single-handedly destroyed that great and clean one because he's having instability now. Alright, who's my weakest? Oh, this one right here. Yeah, they have some poison attacks on them, so... Yeah, the, the, um, the ones we're going to have to look out for are, of course, the Chaos Warriors of Nurgle. Like I said, the, uh, the other ones aren't going to be that bad. Okay, Stink Oracle, focus on there. Get that one down. Oh, and there goes the Great Unclean one. No Rampages. So that's good. I think they fixed their rampage problem. Yeah, um, they're starting to disintegrate. So that's good. Let's send these guys out there then. Yeah, 
Take care of them. And let's do um, yeah, all of these. Oh, there's a demonic unit. Buff up these Croxagores. Demonic Convergence. It's a very decent spell because it goes for 20 seconds and it really boosts you up. Oh, look at that. Croxagores did it. And with that, that's going to wrap up. Yep. See, the, t the deal with demon factions, the Lizardmen are very, very good. They're a high counter to demons because they do um, magical damage at their late game units. And um, they do high damage and they do poison, which reduces the demonic unit's ability to fight. So, um, the Lizardmen Saurus can withstand them. And then the Lizardmen... Um, skinks can do out the poison damage that really disrupts them so they're really good against demons as they should be because in the lore they were the ones that defended against demons so with that let's move on to a tier three and finally we're here at tier three so a lot of big boy units in this one now um so for our main line i've completely done away with the source spears and shields different types of units we're just going to have one central unit and that is the temple guard temple guard um, have the same, um, they're, they're pretty much like the unit combined and upgraded on steroids. So they have a whole lot more armor at 85 with a shield that still, you know, does 35% attack. So they have a halberd, which gives them um, armor piercing anti large. They have charge reflection, charge defense versus large, and the still they have their primal instincts, which is really, really good. They have 42 weapon, weapon damage, weapon strength. Um, really good defense, melee defense, and attack, decent attack. So they're really, really good for holding a line. And um, again, I have some blessed variants, and I have the um, Regiment of Renown variant that gives them um, Guardian. Those are the Star Chamber Guardians. Um, and they have magical attacks as well. So that helps them against demons. And then um, we have for our monsters, only a few of them are. are vanilla um because i i like the the dlc units for the lizardmen they're really really good and i really can can't advise you to buy them more than than ever but uh i will give you some alternatives so for the first monsters we see are some carnosaurs some regular carnosaurs um a feral carnosaur right here which is i believe he is the regiment renown so they're, re they're really good. I don't know if they start with Frenzy. I think, yeah, they do have Frenzy. Um, and then the regular Carnosaur, which is a Blessed Carnosaur, just gives him, um, <coughs> this Blessed Carnosaur just gives them, um, uh, like, um, Siege Tacker and, um, I don't know, I think Siege Tacker is always there, already there. I think it just buffs up their missile, missile resist. Yeah, that's what it is. So they have 50% spell resist. And they have a really cool paint job. So the two Carnosaurs plus the um, Star Source Scar Veteran is on a Carnosaur now. Um, and then we have the Sacred Croxagores, which if you want, if you don't have the DLC, you can just replace these guys with like a Basilodon with a Revocation Crystal or a Solar Engine. That works just as fine. But I love these guys a lot for the DLC. Hunter and the Beast, really, really good. Um, they have a really good charge. They also have this special effect, Dazed, which is really good to have. They, uh, they have, um, these one, this, oh wait, I think this is actually a Ridge of Renown that has Dazed. And, um, they have Perfect Vigor and all that. The regular one just has Magical Attacks, which is really good against Demons. Um, a really high me melee attack, really high armor, just like regular card scores. So they're really good. Um, and of course we have the Stink Oracle on his Troglodon. And um, Mazdamundi is on Zlack, now with his ancient Stagadon. So he's a lot more buffed out. Um, and then we have a Skink Priest, he's on the engine of the, dog, of the god, ancient Stegadon, um, which gives them the um, burning alignment wind ability, which is really, really good to have. And then um, flying over here, we have our Kotals from the uh, from Exowattles DLC. Um, you could replace these guys with um, ancient Stegadons um, or regular Stegadons. You could keep them on as well. They'd work just as fine. 
Um, they're really good support monsters, and um, the regular ones have some bound spells that are like thunderous. And then this one has like an earth blood spell, as well as um, having some extra resistances. And they have the master of the, of, of the sacred places, which allows them to get stock to all their allies. And then finally the big boys, the Dread Saurians. I have the Shredder of Lustria and the Dread, and just one of those extra Dread Saurians. Now, again, you could replace these guys with um, more Carnosaurs um, or a or some more Bastilodons or Stegodons. Um, but again, I just like having some more variety, and these monsters are better. And really, the Dread Saurian is the best. Um, I, is the biggest reason to get the Hunter and the Beast DLC because he's just insane. He, he has insane weapon strength, 7 of 50, armor piercing, 671 poison missile damage with his skinks on the back, 100 armor, and um, 64 melee attack. He's just, in, he's a beast. Alright, so without further ado, let's go on against this Wars of Chaos army. And we have a demon prince, undivided, attacking us with a Lord of Change, and he's got some blood letters. He's got some Saneshi Demonettes, and some Playbearers, and a bunch of, uh, some Chaos Warriors, and I think he's got some Chosen, too. Yeah, he's got some Chosen. All undivided. So we'll be waiting for them. Alright, so you see that circle? I think it's giving stock to my guys. Yes, it's giving stock to them. So they can move hidden. Well, the enemy doesn't know where most of our forces are because we're hidden due to the codals. Yeah, I think we're all hidden except that one codal. Yep. himself. Master Mundi does have his buffed up spells as well. Change is going to be a problem, but that's okay. That is all right. Move these codals back just to reveal the enemy uh, that we're here. I don't ha want to have to use the uh, lifeblood spell on my own. I, I could just, you know, use that with the skink oracle, but this way allows the enemy to see me so they can actually advance to me. I'll move them into position once they're here, and they could just, they, they're, they're really good at uh, just soaring around the battlefield, maybe ki killing enemy air units, like that Lord of Change. Come on guys, fight me. Fight me, this is a perfect defensive position, fight me. <laughs> they're not gonna fight me, they're gonna try to go around. Guessed as much. Oh Jesus, that did a lot of damage. Do that overheal on them. Shall we? Well, they are starting to take damage, so. Let's deal with that. We'll also have that down spell. Send 
those guys in, send those guys in. Yeah, let's fuck these demons up. Fuck all these. Alright, fuck these demons up. Starting to see some demonic units crumble. We'll do some more spells. Gotta love some spells. Shredder. No, that's just a regular Red Saurian. He's doing really good. Yeah, we're doing really good now. Our Carnosaurs are just tearing them up too. Full, full on pandemonium here. They're full on retreating. Yeah, Shredder is just tearing them up. And this was a decent enemy army to fight. Um, it wasn't fully decked out with tier 3 units, but it had a, had a, a, a bunch. So yeah, we did really good. And that's, um, and that concludes our um, army compositions, guys. I hope you enjoyed them. So now, um, let's try, let's wrap this thing up. Alright. Now, having all, having run through those, through those army compositions and walked you through the, through all of the stuff about the Lizardmen, are you ready to take up your your cause for the great plan? Are you ready to purge the fuck the fucking filth of all the chaos in the world and restore the plan of the old ones? Well, dear viewer, I hope that I have showed you a proper guide to the lizardmen and why I love this race so much and how you can just decimate with their monsters. And it's really fun to play as like a sentient um, dinosaur race in in Warhammer. It's really really fun. And um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, if you if you continue to like the guides, you know, just shoot me a like on on YouTube. Hit shoot me a comment as well, um, and you know, subscribe to the channel for more. You know, I, I I'll continue to um, I'll continue to cover each race, and then I'll start diving into each lord. And by golly, the lizardmen have a lot of different different playstyles per per each lord. Um, some lords will require their DLC. To function with them, you know, because of course, but uh, you know, I try to for the base ones to show you like a good vanilla way to play them. So, without further ado, guys, keep it strategic, strat fans. Colonel out. <laughs>